Chelsea Silver should just like go to like a cloning facility and make a bunch of clones of Cade and then like sell them. She'd make a fortune. Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava and today is the start of a nanny romance reading vlog. This is actually later Avery. I've already read all these books, but I forgot to film an intro for this vlog as per usual. So <laughs> these are three nanny romances that I decided to pick up because I was in the huge nanny romance mood. It wasn't until I filmed my March TBR that I realized I have a few nanny romances on here. Let's make a vlog out of it. So that is what I decided to do. And you could tell from the thumbnail that I have a few particularly one book that I am excited to read. So <laughs> enjoy the vlog. I've started Heartless by Elsie Silver and um, I am obsessed with this book so far. Sorry for the sun flare y'all. Um, it is what it is, but I am loving this. <laughs> and I'm only on like chapter six or something. I don't want to stop reading it. Like it's so good. I'm a sucker for so many things in this book. I love ranch set romances which apparently is a minority a lot of my friends don't like like texas ranch set romances <laughs> i don't know because maybe i grew up here but um it's set on a ranch single dad nanny romance like an awesome meet cute i'm gonna keep this video as spoiler free as possible but they're meet cute like i just can't not talk about um so if you don't want to know what their meet cute is like go on but it's literally like chapter one um but <laughs> they're at the coffee shop and he's standing, she's standing in front of him in line and she drops something from her purse when she's trying to get out her wallet. He picks it up and holds it, like just gonna give it back to her. He doesn't realize what he's holding in his hand. It's her underwear. <laughs> and um, basically he tries to like give it back to her and she's like, no, finders keepers, like you can keep them. And I'm like, mm. I'm really liking the relationship so far between Willa and his son. I can't remember his name. I'm really bad with names, I'm so sorry. Um, but literally I just finished the chapter where um, she has her like Jeep down and they go to buy some lettuce at the store so they can just chuck lettuce out the car because that's what he said one of his kids in his class did with his dad and she's like okay <laughs> so they go have fun chucking lettuce out the car <laughs> i love stuff like that i'm a sucker for kids i used to be a nanny so like kids just hold like a special place in my heart especially when they're written well so i am really loving this so far and this is just gonna be like i feel like a recipe for an amazing time like I am so excited to just read more about Willa and Cade and like I want to know what everyone is talking about with this book and why they love it so much and I think so far like I'm getting it. I think I'm getting it. I've only read a few chapters of this book and I'm already like obsessed with both of them. So I'm gonna stop gabbing and get to listening because I need to go like clean up my apartment and I'm just gonna listen to this all day. I'm gonna try and finish it all in one day and I am also buddy reading this with Rachel from Rachel Rates and Sings. I can't wait to like hear her thoughts about it too. Like I love just buddy reading with my friends, especially books that I think we're both gonna love. I'm on chapter 21 and I just have to take, take a second. <laughs> y'all, y'all were not kidding. Y'all were not kidding. This man has a mouth on him. I thought Rhett did no oh no <laughs> so things are obviously happening between the two of them on chapter 21 <clears throat> we've been waiting for this okay like i'm not joking there have been like little scenes throughout the book like the hot tub part okay and other scenes and other comments and other like just tiny moments where i've been like listening to this book and cleaning up and like i've had to stop because i got like butterflies <laughs> i just want this man to forget about the fact that she's way younger than him and get that out of his brain because she's perfect for him like i don't understand like how he can't just like forget about it like it does not matter that she's 25 like she's a consenting adult get with it kate come on and then the scene where she gets sick and he like holds her hair back takes care of her like give me that now. Elsie Silver should just like go to like a cloning facility and make a bunch of clones of Cade and then like sell them. She'd make a fortune. I love romances where you're able to see like this grumpy stoic man completely fall for and become a total softy for a woman. The relationship between Willa and Luke is absolutely wonderful too. Like as someone who's been a nanny, like there is 
this certain type of bond that you form with the kid that you nanny and it's like unlike any other and i really related to willa in certain instances where she felt like she was being affectionate towards luke but she didn't want to step on kate's toes and be overly affectionate um because she's not luke's mom and she doesn't really know because it's her first time like really taking care of kids like she doesn't really know where to stop the line of like this is too much and Cade is like you love my son there is no too much love that you have for my son like it's not bad to love him it's not bad to show him affection like you care for him you keep him safe like they're best friends like i feel like luke and willa are like best friends and i am obsessed with it that's the type of bond that you form when you're a nanny like you feel like it's weird to say but you feel like that kid is yours it's not yours you're not the parent but you raise them in other aspects of their life it's one of the main reasons why my main dream in life is to become a mom is because i've experienced being a nanny to so many kids not so many a few um and there's like no other bond than like being a nanny then i think about if this is the bond that i feel when i'm nannying a kid and like this kid is like basically like my whole world it's gonna be like 10 times that when i become a mom and being a nanny is one of the best feelings ever imagine that being a mom it's just gonna be even more amazing so um <laughs> a little went a little deep here but um that's one of the reasons why i dream of being a mom like i don't have a dream like life career in life like i want to be a mom i feel like kids bring this aspect into people's lives that you can't get anywhere else and it is like magical it's, it's it's magic it is magic and so i just am adoring this i'm adoring every single aspect of this book and so i'm gonna leave you there because i stopped in the middle of chapter 21 <laughs> and it is really good i should have stopped but you know what i just needed to take a pause and get my thoughts out there but i'm gonna i'm gonna leave you alone go away because i need to finish this chapter and this book in general and currently making cookies but I just had to pop on here to say, um, that freaking kitchen scene. Mm -mm. Oh my gosh, I can't. <laughs> I cannot. This book is everything right now. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. That's it. Bye. Hi, everyone. It's been a few days since I've read Heartless, since I finished it. Um, and I just want to say I love this freaking book. I'm giving it five stars. It was so good. I can't say anything bad about it. I finished it a few days ago. I had some friends over for a few days for like a little staycation here and it was so much fun. Um, so I'm back to back to my filming, but um, it was fantastic. I can't stop thinking about it. It was so good. I loved every single aspect of this book and people were not wrong when they talk about this book, when they talk about how amazing it is, it is so good. I honestly was like watching people talk about this book in like videos and I was like, is it really that good? Like I haven't seen anyone give this book under five stars. Like everyone give this book five stars. And they're right, all of them are right. It's so good. And I personally love it way more than Flawless, like way more than Flawless. So it was so good. The nanny romance part in here to die for, like so beautiful. I loved the single parent part, the single dad. I loved the relationship she formed with Luke and the ending with them. So cute. I loved it. I want to reread it now. I, I want to go reread it now. It was so good. I cannot say anything bad about it. I have started and finished a whole book for this vlog. I got another sty infection and so I was not able to like update throughout me reading this book because I was mainly listening to this book with my eye like sealed shut. <laughs> it's still there it's just not as bad but like the past few days my eye has been like sealed shut or it's been like like this basically and I was just coloring on my iPad while listening to this book because of my sty I was not able to like read an ebook because like this eye was like not open all the way so it was very difficult for me to like physically read with my eyeballs and so I was like okay I gotta find an audiobook preferably something on a service I already use like any play or Libby and so I ended up finding a nanny for the reclusive billionaire by Regina Kyle that title is a long one but I found this one on any play and I was like you know what I got nothing to lose the cover looks good let's pick this one up I haven't read a billionaire book in a while this one's about Mallory and Reese so Mallory in here she grew up with cancer she was a child with cancer um and so her whole life she's kind of like been sheltered by her family her family has kind of like babied her in a sense and checked on her 24 7 like she hasn't lived a life independently and so this is the start of her doing that and so I believe she's 24 
24, 25, I can't recollect. She's around that age range and she decides to um, accept the position of being a nanny on this very small island that Reese, our billionaire, owns. Um, she's going to be the nanny for his six-year-old son and is very much the like a Nordic king vibe where right when Reese sees her in person because he interviewed her on the phone and met, like read her qualifications on like online and stuff like that, um, right when he sees Mallory in person, he's like, no, you're not staying here, like, because he's attracted to her. But then when he sees Mallory and his son interacting and playing together, he's like, okay, I'm caving, you can stay, my son, like, is in love with you. So it gave me a lot of a Nordic King vibes in that aspect. And so I really liked the relationship between Mallory and, um, Reese's son. <laughs> and that was one of my favorite parts in the book was the nanny aspect. The way that this author, Regina Kyle, was able to write the kid in here, I loved him. He was so cute. I felt like she did an amazing job with writing about a kid because some authors just can't do it. Like I'm, I sometimes read about kids in books and I'm like, this kid is supposed to be four and he's talking like he's 10. Like what? <laughs> One of the reasons why I didn't like 100% love this book is because Reese in here at the beginning of this book is still very much grieving his wife. His wife died from a terrorist attack three years ago and he is very much still grieving for her, in love with her. And so he thinks that it is a like disservice on his wife's memory to hire Mallory because he is so attracted to her. He's like, I would be betraying my wife if I hired Mallory. This one's also very grumpy sunshine. Mallory is a huge sunshine and um, Reese is a grumpity grump. But when they get to know each other, like sparks fly, obviously he is already very in attracted to her. Mallory is very attracted to Reese right from the get-go. There is an age gap between the two of them. However, there were just some things like missing in here for me. Um, and things I didn't just didn't really like because at the beginning of this book, he is so still like, I feel like in love with his wife. I didn't really feel the point at which he stop love like not stop loving because I don't think you'd ever stop loving your deceased wife but like it felt just a little bit strange for me I don't know how to describe it like there have been other single dad romances that the hero was previously married and his wife has passed and this is him falling in love with a new woman and I feel like this book just didn't handle that aspect in the best way for me personally because I still felt like he was holding such a huge 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 torch for his wife and I don't know I feel like he wasn't like ready to move on from his wife in some aspects and I feel like the author sometimes like forced it? I don't really know how to describe it y'all. I don't know I just feel like the author did not handle that to the way I wanted it to if that makes sense. I think I read better single parent romances where a spouse has passed and it's about them finding someone um after that passing. I just I think I've read about it in other books it was handled better. I don't know I just felt like he was still like so much in love with his wife when he was falling for Mallory. There were just other things I didn't necessarily love about this book. The pacing I felt like was a little off in some aspects and um, there were some cringy moments to me. <laughs> and the main thing though was I felt like it happened way too fast for my liking. At the beginning of this book, he's so in love with his wife, still like grieving over her. And then the span of a couple weeks, he's like full on ready to kiss Mallory even though he's like guilty from, like it's like, I felt like he wasn't ready yet. You know, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know. This one just doesn't necessarily work for me. I think I'm gonna give it three stars. Like it was an okay read. There was nothing like inherently bad about it, but it just wasn't my vibe. My last book that I picked for this Danny Romance reading vlog is Irresistible by Melanie Harlow. This is my first time reading a Melanie Harlow book. So we'll see how this goes. I've heard really good things about this one. And I think I got it for free like years ago um, on, as an ebook, I mean, it was free for a short portion of time, so I downloaded it. Oh, excuse the crying dog, just by the way. <laughs> anyway, um, but of course, I had to get the audiobook because I love audiobooks. So, um, this one is the romance between Franny and Mac, and supposedly Franny is Mac's nanny for his three daughters. He's also the CFO of. Um, the Cloverleaf Farms, like I think it's like a ranch place. I know there's a bunch of weddings that happen there and stuff like that. Franny works at the reception desk, but she also makes a lot of baked goods and treats for people. And that's what she's really passionate about is baking and cooking. And she has been pining for Mac for quite a few years. And Mac has also been pining for Franny for a little bit. So 
Um, I just started it, so we're going to see what I think about it. I kind of have high expectations because all my friends like love this book, so I hope that I do too. I have finished Irresistible by Melanie Harlow, and so I read the last book for this vlog, and I have thoughts, okay? I didn't dislike this book, but this book will not be getting five stars for me. I really loved the nanny like babysitting aspect. I don't think she, I, I think they kept calling her a nanny. I don't know. She didn't feel like a nanny to me. She was more like a babysitter um, just because like they had other people watching them besides our heroine Franny. Um, I don't know. I just feel like a nanny is the one that takes care of the kid when the parents are not able to and he would lean more on another person besides Franny. So was that person also a nanny? They didn't like talk about that. Anyway, I consider her more as a babysitter, but you know what? Nanny babysitter, very similar, you know? But I loved that aspect of it. I love the relationship that she had with his kids, his three daughters. And I do know there was a spinoff series involving um, like the three daughters, I think. I think Ignite deals with Winnie, who's the youngest i think youngest out of the three um and they were all so cute and there was even a part in the book where the three of them like go up to their dad and it's like you need to fix whatever happened between you and franny they basically have an intervention with him <laughs> like these like girls that are all under the age of nine i think like they all have an intervention <laughs> not gonna lie mac made me mad um again i want a man to want his woman or whoever he's in love with, no matter what. Like I want him to know that he doesn't deserve her, but he will have her anyway, like, cause that's his. That woman is his, he is hers, she is his, or they are theirs, whatever the case may be. They are each other's. And I want a man to fight for that and not break up with someone because of a stupid reason. Um, so I didn't like that part. I think my main issue in this book was the fact that both of them started having these feelings for one another before the book started. They'd both been longing after each other for quite a bit and having these feelings and developing these feelings. And we weren't privy to how that all started. Like we were not in their perspective when this these feelings started happening between the two of them. I would have loved if there was maybe a flashback scene to when they first met or a flashback scene when they started falling for each other. Like I would have loved that. I think that would have enhanced the story quite a bit. One of the main reasons why I love romance books is because you get to see someone falling in love. I felt like these two already loved each other before the book even started. I wanted to see how they fell in love and I really didn't get that. This was about them trying to figure out how to be in a relationship with one another, which is fine. That's a that's a good book. It was a good book. I'm giving this book 3.5 stars. Like it's not a bad book. It's not what I personally love when I read a romance book. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just personal preference. So many of my friends love this book. So many friends have given it have been giving it five stars, but personally just doesn't match what I love to read about in a romance. I really love to see like the relationship develop from start to end. Like I want to see the start, the developing feelings, and then the happily ever after. How do they end up together? And this hero, like Mac also just kind of pissed me off a little bit because of him thinking all the time that him and his girls were this giant baggage that Franny would have to deal with if they were together. And Franny just kept saying, no, I love you. I love your girls. Can you listen to me? And he didn't. I'm just like, she's telling you something, dude. Open your ears, please, and listen to her, okay? But again, I loved the nanny part. I feel like all these nanny romances did a great job with like the whole nannying aspect. Um, I loved the heroine when she like was getting into like her baking stuff because I love baking too. So I really related to her in that and just like the cooking and stuff like that. Like I really liked it. But that's how I feel about this book. It was an okay read for me. There was nothing bad about it. It's just something I felt was lacking was those like flashback moments that I would have loved and we didn't get. Anyways, that's gonna be the end for this Nanny Romance reading vlog. I planned on reading more for this vlog, but I'm kind of burnt out on Nanny Romances right now. And that's okay. I'm listening to my reading taste right now, my reading mood, and I'm like, I'm not in the mood anymore. So yeah, I think three is good and we're done. Um, my favorite for this video was definitely Heartless. That one was five stars. And then my second favorite would probably be um, 
irresistible. I was about to say Ignite. <laughs> it's not Ignite. Ignite is the spinoff book. Oh, and I also do want to mention, I really did like Melanie Harlow's writing style. So I'm going to be reading more of her books. Okay. I just wanted more of that romantic development. So I'm hoping that that is in other books in the series. And then the Nanny Billionaire one is definitely my least favorite out of these. And the Nanny aspect of that book I loved. It was the romance part that I found kind of lacking. That's gonna be it for this video. Please let me know down below if you have loved and read any of these books. Let me know what you thought of them. And also leave your Nanny romance recommendations in the comment section down below because I love them. And when I get in the mood again for Nanny romance, I will definitely pick some of them up. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.